Our next speaker is uh, Colonel Greg Conti, who is the director of the Army Cyber Institute. Uh, Colonel Conti uh, was commissioned in 1989 as a military intelligence officer. Uh, his education includes uh, a Bachelor of Science from, a, from West Point, a Master's from Johns Hopkins, and a PhD from Georgia Tech, all in computer science. Uh, Colonel Conti is the author of two books and over 60 conference and journal papers on cyber operations, online privacy, data visualization, and usable security. Uh, Colonel Conti co-created U.S. Cyber Command's Joint Advanced Cyber Warfare course, or JACWIC, uh, and he's spoken at numerous industry and academic conferences, including RSA, Black Hat, DEF CON, Google Ideas, VizSec, and uh, SciCon. Uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce Colonel Greg Conti. Okay, uh, am I on the sound, guys? Can you hear me? Great. Uh, so thanks, thanks a lot for coming. We had 220 people RSVP for this, and I think it's uh, really a, an awesome thing to have uh, the, this type of discussion because there's so many unknowns in what we do. We're really discovering and plotting the way ahead. And many of the people in the room, it's a pleasure to meet you because I, we've dealt, I mean, it's a small community. We've dealt with each other uh, oftentimes by distance, so it's a pleasure to, to meet you face to face. Um, and I'd also encourage you to, uh, the, the questions you're hearing are really good, and they can lead to other questions and interesting talks. So the intent here is this is just the first iteration. If we send out an invitation next time and you invite two friends, uh, we'll pack the room. And we'd like to see some of you on stage with your ideas, showing, uh, putting them out in front and getting feedback. And they can be crazy ideas. That's okay, because that's uh, what we're trying to do is get, that's how we're going to figure out the way ahead. So my crazy idea is uh, the idea of a cyber leader course. The, we're living in historic times. We're creating a cyber branch. We're seeking to professionalize that branch and put it on par with, uh, with the, the, what you'd see in the classic infantry career development model where people go through a series of progressive assignments, rigorous gates, things like airborne school, ranger school that takes them up to an elite level performance that has best in the world division commanders. How do we do that in the cyber domain? How, how do we create a course, then, that can be used to grow cyber leaders uh, in, a, in, a, in a way that's effective and will grow uh, best in class and act as a, as, a, as a gate and a development model, something really substantial? So like, many of the, like everyone here, these aren't uh, official opinions. These are ideas. And this is not my own work. Uh, a number of collaborators here, most of them, I believe, are in the audience. I'd like to point out, uh, as part of this, uh, Lieutenant uh, Michael Wiegand had literally just graduated from Ranger School uh, when he helped collaborate on this. So his, he had very fresh scars from the experience. And uh, as well as Colonel uh, retired Dan Ragsdale, uh, I'll ask him to raise his hand if no one knows him. He served in the Ranger Training Brigade and had a, a, a deep in, uh, look inside how, how it's done at Ranger School proper. And for the record, he suggested that we do not use the tab uh, graphic because it's uh, heresy in certain circles. But I think it, it, does, uh, capture, it does capture kind of the essence of what we're going for. So uh, we left it in and kind of overrode him against his better judgment. But he was kind of. So you heard this quote. This is what we're seeking to build in cyber uh, operators, cyber leaders. Right? How do we get that? How do we get from where we are? For those of you, if you've been inside the, f since the birth of these organizations and been from the inside, you see it's messy, right? And then you can look over the fence at things like special forces and, and you see this mature, developed model. So how do we get from where we started just really three or four years ago, formally, to a professionalized core of, of, of experts and leaders that's best in the world? Well, you can look for inspiration to Ranger School as one example. Since 1959 and continuing through the present, they've, it's been a premier leadership school in the Army uh, focused on uh, using missions and sleep deprivation and a variety of other uh, activities to grow combat leaders. So what would, look, what would it look like, and that's where kind of the idea behind this is, if you took that basic idea but mapped it over to our domain, what would it look like? And that's what this talk's about. 
if you think about how the army is organized, and I apologize that I've only uh, highlighted the 82nd and 101st. There are other, you know, clearly other units. But if you look at how the army is organized, you've got this large block of rest of the army, right? That's the line units that we've all been, been there and served in those units. But if you want to get into the 82nd, the gateway is airborne school. You have to jump out of an airplane five times and do it as a daily part of your, your a regular part of your job after that. It's a gateway, it's a filter. Um, if you want to go serve in the 101st, airborne school, I'm sorry, air assault school is, is the gateway. If you want to move into the ranger regiment, ranger school, absolute prerequisite, and in SF, the prerequisite is the special forces Q course. We can, do, we can draw this similar model, I believe, on what's forming today uh, and, and create similar gateways. And some of you have gone through them, some of the courses out of Fort Meade, best in the world classroom experiences. Very, very demanding. But what we're talking here is something a little different. And what's interesting about airborne school, all of those schools, is that those people don't necessarily just serve in, in those units that they're the gateways for. They're, they're fused back into the regular force and uplift the entire force. That's very possible with what I'm talking about as well. So if you took, and I don't want to steal Ed's thunder, but <clears throat> if you took one part Cyber City, and Cyber City is a, a, a model city, with real world, uh, real world components behind it that then can be used as missions. Now he'll, have, uh, he'll be glad to tell you more about that. Very exciting uh, idea. And combine that with a mount site, what do you get? You get something, um, I think, very interesting. And then if you add real world actors, like the F uh, Federal Law Enforcement Training Center has real world scenarios. And maybe even merge it into something like, and I apologize, I can't pronounce this. I talked to, <coughs> I talked to Gary Decker. Is Gary here? Okay, so Gary kindly came out. Can you pronounce it for us? Muscatatuck. Okay, but this is, I, I had a chance to see the full brief. I haven't included all the slides in here because these are going to be on the internet, and I don't exactly know where the line is. Uh, we've kind of gone back and forth. Uh, but, but the idea here, it's a real functioning city with a hospital, sewage, water treatment plant, school, prison, embassy, and the like. And if you took then that idea of cyber city plus this and the innovative work that's on ongoing out there now, you have uh, the makings of a really compelling uh, uh, you know, course, potential uh, facility to be used both, I think, in terms of uh, immediate use as well as something that could support a cyber leader course. And maybe even a little bit of, uh, of battle school from Ender's Game. <laughs> so what would this look like? All right, so we could model. I think the key, and I taught uh, James Carolyn, who's here, uh, we, we both built Jackwick and we taught it. And what happened at 1530 every day? At 1530, everybody started getting antsy because they had to go home and they had to fight traffic, okay? So it was a good course up until about 1530 and then we lost everybody. But what we're talking about here is not a rigorous, a rigorous in-class experience. And there are some great ones out of Fort Meade and other places, Sands as well. We're talking about an immersive experience where people live this the entire time. And uh, they would be mission-based. Right? So a lot of the things you do in the classroom are, are relatively small scale activities, but we can build this around uh, missions. And if you think, you've heard the phrase operationalizing cyber, getting out there, trying to get this uh, cyber operations in support of tactical operations. Right? This type of course allows you to start getting at that, as well as developing the lead, uh, testing leaders, developing leaders along the way. Part of this as well, and you're going to see different aspects of training uh, that could be incorporated, is the key is people are going to come with various backgrounds. So to, to push them up to the appropriate level and finding that point. So I can't say, I think we, what I'm proposing is a good starting point, or what we're proposing is a good starting point, but it's not an end state. So it's going to be, it, it, ha it has to be tuned. And there will be attrition. This is the type of course, that if you look at Ranger School, 50, just over 50% graduate. So that, that would apply to this as well. So what are you trying to do with, with this type of course? Develop leadership is really the primary objective, but in the context of leading cyber operations and cyber operators. Facilitating a warrior ethos, trying to over, uh, learning to overcome uh, adversity 
and fighting through to mission accomplishment. It's no different than the Rangers, but the domain now is, is different. Another aspect I think is critically important, and this goes back to what Dimitri was talking about, is an adversary mindset. That you need to be playing chess, not solitaire or checkers. You need to be thinking moves ahead. How are you thinking like an adversary? And this is the type of course, these are type of activities that can support that. And then ultimately, and I think it's important for all of us, and the reason why we brought on a, a full-time ethics fellow into the Army Cyber Institute, is that we're learning dangerous skills. And if someone decides to go rogue with those skills, that's very bad. We've worked very hard to get where we are today as an, uh, as an, uh, as an Army and as a, a Department of Defense, and to lose that would be very bad. <coughs> it would take just one front page New York Times story to destroy much, much progress. Could divide it into four phases. In, increasingly, it would be weighted toward training, uh, but it, with missions along the way. So the training mission balance. This is just uh, just a swag, but it's close, I think. And then along the way, the training reduces and the missions increase. So uh, and it, it evolves over time, and it goes from small unit uh, activities all the way up to say uh, potentially full team, full team type, uh, full on team type activities. And importantly. Uh, the integration of cyber operations with kinetic teams, real world teams. Potentially could even be linked to uh, the SFQ course or something like that in the final phase. So what would training look like? This is representative training. You can't, you, you have to fi figure out where people are, what your learning objectives are, which I've put up there, and what training you need to provide. The idea is to accomplish those objectives. Here, here are some examples, and I've deliberately steered away from things that you'd probably find in your, uh, your typical um, hands-on keyboard type class, but it still gets at that adversary mindset. <clears throat> Something like lock picking. The idea is if you look at a lock and you know how to, you will, if you've taken a lock picking course, you look at a lock as just a, a little puzzle to be solved instead of uh, you know, blindly thinking it provides more security than it does. And that's those, those connections you're trying to make with the course. Another thing might be 3D printing, something we're going to increasingly see on the battlefield. Learning to improvise with the, the gear that you have on hand. If you think of the, was it the Apollo 13 mission, how they dumped everything out and said, how do we fix this, this problem? In many cases, it, when something bad happens, that's more of the mode we're going to be in. Uh, and then along the way, you can, you can up the activities. And here, this is a, a photo of wireless, uh, wireless mapping. Uh, you could get into, and some of these, I will admit, aren't refined right now, uh, but it's a chance to evolve them along the way. Uh, cyber operational preparation environment. Many of these are dynamic. The cyber planning process, particularly in terms of inter intersecting with kinetic operations, still evolving, but, the, but you can, but you can up, up the game here. Ending with uh, an exam and then those missions that force them out. And I'll have some example missions in a second. Uh, so what's this, the photo of? Okay, shredded paper, okay, good. Uh, but um, any, uh, but what's, what's specifically, there was a contest a while ago. Anyone from DARPA might, uh, <laughs> sir. Uh, <coughs> so again, that's that mindset you can go for. When you think something's shredded and you find out it actually it might not be, uh, that's, that's an important connection to make. So those, those are the type of long-lasting educational uh, takeaways, of course, like th this could have if uh, done correctly. So anyway, just examples here. And then, uh, again, le less and less on the training, more and more on the mission. Uh, here's another example, the idea of tamper-evident devices. There's tamper-resistant tamper seals. You may have seen them on your cable box. Uh, it turns out that many of those are, you can just buy them offline, myriad ways they can be defeated. And it gets at that hacker, that attacker, adversary mindset to be able to anticipate uh, how uh, things can be taken apart, put back together, and security defeated. It may be useful for you on the defense, and it's certainly useful on the offense, and to get into the mind of your adversary. The trick then with that training is to dial it in at the appropriate levels, along with factors like sleep um, and stress, uh, available time, 
and the amount of help they get. Say you're not going to expect someone to code software that uh, they can uh, recreate a shredded document. Maybe you give them a particular tool, teach them how to use it. They, part of it is they have to teach themselves new technology, another ongoing part I think that's essential to what we do. And then some sample missions. One mission could be, uh, or early on, could be wireless survey, give them the tools. And again, you can dial the size of the mission, the, the objectives, whether they have to do it without being caught and the like. Another might be a cyber cafe. And I have to emphasize, this whole, this whole talk was cleared for public release. So we have, I'll, I'll point you to the papers, uh, uh, Cyber Cafe. And just because I'm showing Peterson Air Force's uh, Cyber Cafe, I'm not making any implications about that it being a hotbed of uh, enemy activity, except maybe during the, uh, the Army Air Force game. Uh, water plant, and this makes me think of uh, the, the Muscatee. Yes, I will pronounce it incorrectly, but Gary can help it uh, pronounce it uh, correctly. But uh, they have these type of facilities there, right? And it could be an offensive mission or a defensive mission. It could be dialed in as appropriate. Um, General's laptop, which I think is, was great. This came out of the cyber defense exercise, came out of NSA. Uh, the idea, yes, so were you, you were the, 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 the creator of that. Yes, yeah, so we have the creator of the General's laptop. Uh, the idea is that you're presented with a machine that you have to put on the network in a very short period of time. How do you make it safe to do so? And it's really an awesome event. Uh, I just went out and found a random general on the internet at a keyboard. So I, I, I removed the name and I re removed the unit patch uh, in Photoshop. So what you're seeing here is not a general doing anything bad. And if you happen to recognize his hands or something like that, there's, it, it's nothing, uh, nothing personal. Uh, and I think it starts really getting interesting where the idea of supporting a kinetic ra raid uh, or other types of activities like that and the inter potential intersection with other training courses, uh, it, I think it starts getting really interesting. Uh, finally, um, the idea of Judgment Day, for those of you familiar with Terminator, but the idea that, like, okay, here's a new enemy battlefield robot. Figure out a way to defeat it. Take it apart. Figure out a way to defeat it. And, and provide just enough support so they can accomplish this, but under stress, don't give it away. That's really the key to all of this, is dialing in at the appropriate level. So to graduate, really what it comes down to is demonstrated leadership, how to build the team, the very, uh, the, uh, how to work uh, a given team under those time constraints, under that stress, uh, the idea of recycling, and then instructors there provide spot reports. So this is how we've mapped it, largely this models after how Ranger School does it. Okay, who's familiar with Doctrine Man? Yes, is Doctrine Man in the room and wants to admit it? So Doctrine Man is an anonymous persona uh, out there that is reputably an Army major, or was once an Army major located at Fort Leavenworth and wrote, uh, wrote Doctrine. Uh, don't want to know who he is, but he, he's kind of an instigator of, of thought, and he, and, and he jumps on certain things. So when we published the articles, he jumped on. Uh, and I'll have some quotes from what this engendered in a moment. So this gets at the idea of, as we're trying to professionalize, we need to uh, earn credibility, right? We're coming from a domain that's different. Largely the people in power uh, in the Army come from the maneuver forces. And in the Air Force, it's the pilots. And in the Navy, it's the uh, ship captains. So we have to earn that respect. So anyway, just a, a matter uh, of entertainment purposes, if nothing else, I, I think it's useful to get a couple of Doctrine Man uh, comments. I think this is funny. Does anyone else think this is funny? Uh, <laughs> so th this goes back to an, uh, an army tradition that if you go through ranger school in the winter, it's harder because you're probably likely to freeze to death and you've earned the right to sew on your ranger tab in white thread. That's where this comes from. Uh, got better feedback, from more erudite feedback from uh, a small wars journal. Uh, and that's the part of it. That's why we're here, right? Don't claim, we don't claim we've solved this. We think it's an idea worth discussing. And getting it out there, even in Doctrine Man's forum, uh, but as well as small wars, to get feedback is what it's all about. So in the paper, 
uh, we listed a laundry list of training and a laundry list of, uh, of missions. So to be fair, it was, it was really impossible to accomplish. No human being could do everything we said. The trick is we're not expecting that. We're expecting to dial in at the appropriate levels. But I think it's useful uh, for that, uh, these type of questions to come out. Another might be if uh, the idea of if a tab was ever to be awarded for something like this, like the Sapper Leader course has, uh, has a tab, uh, would, uh, would that give away who you are and what you do in a way that, it, that impacts operational security? Well, I would say that uh, my MI brass probably does just the same. It says I have a top secret clearance, right? And if you have an SF tab, that certainly says something. Uh, another, and I thought this was, uh, this was uh, interesting, we had mentioned uh, the idea that there's potential here for wounded warriors being able to take part in this. I find that particularly intriguing. Men and women can take part in this. And then this goes back, uh, and then you get kind of out of the box ideas, probably beyond the scope of what we're talking about, but again, interesting ideas, kind of out of box ideas. Maybe we should have this person talk at Cyber Talks 2.0. And then the potential, if done correctly, for recruiting and retention. OK. So personally, I think this course is doable and would go a great way, uh, a long way to uh, developing and professionalizing what we do. It would go a long way to helping operational, uh, operationalize cyber. The facilities exist. In terms of instructors, I mean, I think everyone knows that probably half the, half the expertise of cyber is sitting in this room right now. I mean, I mean, not quite, but there's, there's a shortage of people, and the idea of standing up a whole new course in the midst of what we have going on is, is difficult. It could be bootstrapped with core cadre, probably like we, uh, perhaps maybe how 255 Sierra was done. Ultimately, I'd like to see this, though, not be in, uh, contracted out. This needs to be owned in terms of the Army or maybe even at the DOD level uh, by the military. The way the Ranger Regiment rotates people, their best people, through the, the uh, Ranger Training Brigade. Uh, though that's, that's where this ultimately needs to end up. And ultimately, it's the quality of the ground. You can't market your way to... Uh, you, you can't market your way to success on this. It's the quality of the graduates, quality of the program, what contributions they make to the Army, the DOD, and the nation that would make the difference in this. Okay. If you're interested in more, we have a uh, mid-length, kind of shortish mid-length paper in Small Wars Journal and a full-on version uh, on the uh, cyber.army.mil website under reports and uh, lot, lots of detail. So I'd encourage you to take a look. Uh, feedback is welcome. And uh, many of the authors are wandering around here, so feel free to, uh, uh, to grab them and, and present your ideas. So with that, let's see where, uh, Dave, how am I on time? Five minutes. Okay, so I'm, uh, and again, both of these obviously have been cleared for public release. All right, with that, I'm happy to take any questions. Sir. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's, uh, so the, the point was it's, it's a very dynamic domain. I'd add that Moore's Law just constantly fuels the rate of change. And you get back to that idea of training versus education. Training is learning to use a specific tool uh, and it typically is, uh, but skips over the underlying fundamentals. Uh, but it's very, very applicable and immediately. You can sit people down and they're immediately at a run. It doesn't uh, age well, though. I think a lot of the things here really get it back at the leadership aspects, and there are vehicles to this developing of a cyber leader. Um, you can't create this so that it has to be updated. It, the labs have to be updated every single time. I mean, Ranger School itself, I mean, go, again, it's, it, the conduct of kinetic missions is, doesn't change very fast, and, and it almost isn't the point in many ways of Ranger School. Those are a tool toward stressing people and forcing them to perform. So I think you can dial in the right balance of things that uh, don't change uh, so, quick, so quickly that you need a whole cadre of people maintaining it. Because I know in the electrical engineering and computer science department, the rate of change is so high, you're always on, you always have to be on top of it. Other questions? Many of these tools exist, but there's a lot of free range. Yes. 
That's a good question. I mean, I'd like to think that uh, I, I'd like to think that it's the, the the type of qualifications that allow someone to be on a team would be the would be the prerequisites. Uh, sorry, lost lost who asked. Uh, who asked? Okay, uh, I would I would think it'd be the type of people like the prereqs. We're going through qualification standards now, and developing what those should be. I would think that that type of level of preparation would be sufficient. Uh, and again, we'd have to figure that out. You can dial it in. So I mean, it needs to be uh, I think at a high enough level that we're we're really getting a, 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 to uh, the goal that we're trying to achieve. Uh, but it, it, so so I think if off the top of my head right now, I'd say be. Uh, compete, uh, completing such things as the cyber uh, uh, basic course and the, if, on the officer side for the the, uh, uh, the CMF 17 qualification course, something like that would probably be there. Plus, I mean, what we're talking about, we're trying to group pull into this whole area are people with background, interest, and mindset to support it. On the enlisted side, I would say people who've gotten to the point where they're ready to be on a team, gone through the required training at various places, particularly at Fort Meade. But I'm open to ideas. I'm happy to talk uh, offline. So OK, I'll do a survey. Um, raise your hand if you think this is an absolutely crazy idea. And is OK? That's, so we probably should talk, and I'll find out where, I, where I'm at. Oh, crazy good. OK. Well, I guess I didn't define, the, uh, define crazy. Um, something worth continued thought? Um, Okay, let me, let's say. So crazy idea, uh, some, or something that has merit and should be continued to look at. Okay. Not going to be easy, I understand that. We're talking heresy here. Okay, if I was uh, at, Fort, uh, at Fort Benning, they would shoot me, probably. But that's okay. Uh, we're trying to think out of the box. Sir? And I think that goes back to the, the question uh, for earlier. Is it, it would be at the end of that pipeline, right? I mean, rarely do you have privates. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know the full demographics. But I would think it would be at the end of those type courses would be the time that some, a leadership course. And it doesn't necessarily have to follow on immediately after. And I have, I have to also emphasize, this is just an idea, right? This isn't like we're not, we're not building, uh, building this now. The whole part that we're trying to do is just throw ideas out there and see if they resonate. Mm. So, I mean, a very valid point. Uh, I think there are different ways to approach this, depend, and, and that would be very valid. I like the, I, it's, it, there's really a little disingenuous. I said the, the uh, special forces, and I kind of lump special forces and ranger. Special forces, you typically go in and you stay in, which is kind of where we're going. Ranger school, uh, only a small percentage actually end up in the ranger regiment. The less, it's rare to see a special forces uh, qualified officer than you'd see a ranger. Uh, school uh, qualified officer in, in the active force. And that's kind of what we're talking about a little bit. So I, I think you could go either way. Uh, and I, I was really impressed. I mean, from what I've seen, uh, the refining of idea process in the Army, ugly though it is sometimes, and actually cranking it out. Uh, what came out of the, the uh, subject matter expert panel and the creation of the cyber branch was really good. 
And so you start with something that's an ill-formed idea, and then people will ask questions like that, and you'll bounce it off resources and, and champions. Ultimately, this requires a champion, right, who buys into the vision and a high-level champion and that would take it, take it through to conclusion. Uh, and those questions, I think, would be answered along the way as you actually define uh, exactly what you're going for. Sir. It, it, so the question was, should this be in the joint rule? Uh, it could very well be, sir. I mean, we're talking about critical mass, right? I, I think that you need to, in the era of constrained resources, that if you can pull resources, it can be a very powerful thing. I, I like to think that success reinforces success, that you demonstrate potential to do something like this, and that people see value, then they will, they will follow, follow suit. Yeah, so the, the comment was like Sam, the SAMs, uh, the, the really the world-class uh, mission planning tr uh, planners course uh, program that we have at Fort Leavenworth kind of permeated in other schools. Yes, and it's kind of a leading the way. And, and it's, I, I don't say that it has, to, in, in our domain, this, it has to be, we must be discovered here, but I, I think there's innovation coming from all the services. Sir, Andy. Very good point. Good. And, uh, yeah. We can cut us off here. Uh, so we can take just about a 10 minute break. Uh, Colonel Cotty will be, uh, hopefully, you can remain yep. here for a few minutes to, to answer any individual questions that folks have. So we're going to take a break uh, until 11 o'clock. Thanks.